Creativity toes a blurry line between magic and genius. Ideas seem to happen in the flash of an instant. Works appear to be born whole. Discovery only works with eureka moments. And to us, the only real creator is the misunderstood genius, enveloped in a powerful aura of originality. Like anything worth writing, it came inexplicably and without method. When it all comes together and makes sense, there's like a click in your brain and you understand things again. But these nearly magical properties have steadily grown out of proportion. We have come to idealize the genius, vilify all unoriginal works, and even misunderstand our own brains. See, the idea of the idea is a myth. And it all starts with what we've come to know as genius. We're led to believe that magic happens to a few select geniuses to whom creation comes as easy as chewing gum. But are genius brains really that far superior? Stanford's Lewis Terman sought to answer this very question by testing 168,000 children. He placed them on a scale from idiocy to genius and identified 1,500 child prodigies. He tracked their accomplishments for the rest of their lives. Some sought creative outlets, but others found more ordinary work. But the most interesting thing is what happened to the non-creative, non-geniuses who, according to theory, shouldn't have ever done anything creative. Two of them, William Shockley and Luis Alvarez, won Nobel Prizes. In the end, Terman's study failed to prove that some are born geniuses, and no other attempts or follow-ups could ever prove genius was related to creative abilities. Still, popular culture constantly reminds us that geniuses must have sudden bursts of inspiration. I was standing on the edge of my toilet, hanging a clock, the porcelain was wet, I slipped, hit my head on the edge of the sink, and when I came to, I had a revelation, a vision, a picture in my head. It came to me. We still quote Mozart saying, my subject stands almost complete in my mind. Even though this quote has been proven to be forged as early as 1856, Mozart did sketch his compositions, revise them, and sometimes even got stuck. Archimedes almost certainly did not shout Eureka. The story of him jumping out of the bathtub was written by Vitruvius, two centuries later. Even culture's most beloved genius, Einstein himself, did not come up with a special theory of relativity in a burst of inspiration. He refused the notion that discovery comes in a sudden moment of enlightenment and actually wrote, I was led to it by steps. Eureka's Greek for this bath is too hot. Stories of aha moments are just that, anecdotal, romanticized myths that make tremendous work seem almost spiritual. We rarely ever know all the steps taken behind the finished work, so we come to idealize accomplishments. We see creation as magic, when, in fact, it's about work. And speaking of idealization, it's no coincidence that the light bulb has become synonymous with inspiration. Like a flipped switch, sudden illumination brings fully formed ideas into our mind. Much like Edison's wizardry brought light to people's homes. Edison was viewed as a prolific inventor, so the light bulb quickly became the iconic symbol for new ideas. Only Edison didn't invent the light bulb. He only improved on dozens of previous versions, each one a little better than the one before. Pop culture is full of references to genius. The genius works alone in a cave or laboratory. He needs nothing else but his own research. The work he puts in is highly original and based on his ideas alone. And in sudden sparks of inspiration, he somehow manages to pull off great achievements. Now, what about the word genius? This is Francis Galton, the guy who coined it. 
This seems in line with our modern description. So who are those special few he was referring to? Whites, who at the time were the opposite of the Negro race. Galton's 1869 study, Hereditary Genius, gave centuries of prejudice a facade of reason and science. A century and a half of actual science has debunked any notion of eugenics, but some people still think of Galton's series as real science. The myth of the genius and even eugenics exists because of what we want to see. We like simple stories that explain our complex and scary world. We like to hear their simple solutions to everything, even to previously uncharted areas such as our brains. But the downside is, we only see the destination. When something appears out of nothing, we think there must be something mystical in the mix. The story sweeps us off our feet with its dizzying array of promises. And so we refuse to see the road that each creator takes. But the truth is, you don't have to be superhuman to create. It's all based in ordinary thinking. Every beautiful thing ever created was born out of effort and error. Each maker is flawed, but all it takes is putting one foot in front of the other. Little steps that move you incrementally forward. Sometimes you run off course, sometimes you come to a completely unexpected conclusion. Yet our romantic prejudice about creation lingers on. Ideas are so elusive and our minds so complex that surely there must be something unconscious, magical even, about it. Even if everyone can do it. Which brings us to... 